Thank you for joining Resurrection Lutheran Church this Sunday morning, giving praise with us for God's blessings of music, prayer, and scripture. I, Pastor Karen Perkins, will be sharing a message of grace, forgiveness, and hope. All of the worship leaders welcome you. We gather in the name of the Father, in the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that, following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Now it's time for our children's message. I'll get to the top of it. So this week is the beginning of Lent. It's the first Sunday in Lent. And I think everybody here knows what Lent is, but those listening on the radio may not. It is a time of preparation as we get ready for Holy Week and Easter. It's not just for Easter, it's for that whole week before, starting with Palm Sunday. Now there's another season that we get ready, but it's different. At Advent, we get ready for Christmas, and at Lent, we get ready for Easter. And Lent is always different because we get ready in a different way. It's still a joyous event that we're celebrating, but we're getting ready in kind of a, a spring cleaning kind of way. The same way that it is now spring and maybe our parents or ourselves are getting ready for the spring. And so with Lent and with spring cleaning, there are some things that kind of go hand in hand. In the springtime, we try to open up our homes. Maybe you leave once it's warm. It's still a little snowy here, but once it gets a little bit warmer, you might open up the windows, air the house out. Well, we do that with ourselves during Lent. We look in and try to open up what we might be holding down and keeping us clustered and all musty from the winter. We clear out. Have you ever had to go through your closet or your toys in the spring and get rid of those things that maybe were broken or you don't play with anymore? There are things in our lives that we have to clear out as well that we talk about and we think about during Lent. So during Lent, it's a good time to ask ourselves, have we made any mistakes, any messes, anything that we should apologize for and clean up before Easter comes? Because then is when we get to plant and grow. And we do that with ourselves as well. Once we clean up and once we prepare the soil, then we can grow and grow healthy relationships and healthy plants and those things. And so we pray. Dear God, thank you for helping us to open up, to clean up, and to clear up our messes as we plant the seeds of love and get ready for spring. Amen. Thank you. I like that spring cleaning of ourselves. I invite you to rise as you are able. I'm going to tell you something about the gospel acclamation during Lent. It's going to be the same tune, one verse before the gospel and a different verse afterward.
After being filled with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, Jesus is led into the wilderness. Through his responses to the temptations of the devil, he defines what it means to be called the Son of God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, I will be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Oh, no, we have another verse. you to be seated. 40. 40 days in the wilderness. We have 40 years in the uh, wilderness where the, uh, the um, Israelites were departing Egypt. We have uh, the ark, Noah's ark, was at sea for 40 days. Um, we, there are actually a number of 40 days and 40 years that show up in the Bible. 40 is a symbolic number. It means the time in between, a whole period. It, in terms of years, it's a whole generation. 40 days is it's just a, a, whole, a whole time, roughly a month. OK, a little more than a month. But, 40 is more important as this in-between wilderness time than it is as the number. Because we see this spirit driving Jesus into the wilderness. It's very interesting that the spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness. The spirit enters into Jesus at his baptism. The Spirit then immediately drives him into the wilderness. And we will see over and over again in Luke, people empowered by the Spirit, people moved by the Spirit, Jesus giving, given life by the Spirit and bestowing the Spirit on people. Very important in Luke's telling of the gospel. And we have this driven into the wilderness to be tested. Why? Okay, Jesus, Jesus knows Jesus is, or maybe Jesus knows at that point or not. We think Jesus knows already that he's the Messiah. God knows that Jesus is the Messiah. The people still aren't getting it. So it's going to take over and over again for the people to get it. And what's, what's the, the devil's point? Or it's actually, it, it's the diabolical one, is the Greek. There are a lot of things that get translated as the devil in our, in our uh, sort of contemporary understanding. But the diabolical one, 
the one who is trying to trick, trying to lead astray. Because if Jesus is going to go to the cross for our sins, yet as the sinless one, Jesus is fully entering into human experience. While Jesus lives without sin, in order to take our, our life, our reality, to the cross, the whole point of incarnation is that God encounters humanity and Jesus experiences humanity in the incarnation. And part of humanity, and a significant part of humanity, is what's going to lead you astray? What's important to you? What matters? What are your values? First thing is food. I don't know if anybody here has ever fasted. The longest fast I've ever done is three days. Um, that's the best I can do. Uh, but it's, it's not easy. And yeah, some of us get a little grumpy. But it's a symbol of giving up all those things that are, are physical demands and physical expectations. It's no different from the 40 years that the Israelites were in the desert. And their food was provided for them by God, exactly as much as they needed. When food, when food is offered as this temptation for Jesus, his re response from scripture, man does not live by bread alone. But it's those things that are, are physically important to us, those things that we want to cling to, that we want to hold to, those things that we hunger for, whatever it is that we hunger for in our lives. If that is our priority, if that's the thing we love, and we're not experiencing it through God's grace, we're being led astray. Next then is even authority, authority over the kingdoms. It's actually thought that this is probably the Roman Empire is being talked about. The whole world at this time was the Roman Empire. And uh, the, there, there were lots of layers of authority in the Roman Empire from Caesar to local authorities to ethnic authorities. And by saying, I give you authority over all of this, it's social importance. So we've talked about physical, the things that we crave physically, the things that we hunger for physically. Now this is, what do we hunger for socially? What is it that we think will give us the privilege, the comfort, and the status that most of us desire? And the people who have that status can get any food they want. They can, they can tax whomever they want. They can demand whatever they want from from the crops. They can, they can take people's lives. I mean, there's a whole lot of authority wrapped up in imperial governance. So authority over not just your food and your daily needs, but authority over your whole position in your whole position in the world. The, Amanda talked about cleaning out our relationships. Well, this here is talking about what are those seductive things that will let you have unhealthy relationships? Because if you want to have power over, that's an unhealthy relationship. Jesus had the opportunity to have power over all of us and chose instead to submit for our sakes. So besides not eating food that isn't, isn't provided by the grace of God, anything, anything that's relational that we don't experience as, as a gift of God's grace and a mutual and an equal gift as we relate to each other is distracting us. That's the thing that's taking us away. Because again, he could, have had, he could have had the authority, but the model is to submit. And he uses scripture to do and then the, the last thing is the um, throw yourself down. 
because scripture says the angels will, will protect you. Now he's trying to give them spiritual authority. Essentially, prove that God is God. If your God is so hot, uh, let's see him perform. I mean, that's the, the essential message. Spiritual authority. So we've talked about physical authority. We've talked about social authority. Now it's spiritual authority that's being offered. And he uses scripture to do it, which is fabulous that he takes these two verses from Psalm 91 that we just read earlier. Because it's an example of if you take God's word out of context, if you focus on the little piece that suits your needs, you can be led astray. You can lead yourself astray. You can lead others astray. You can be led astray. Whenever scripture is used in a way that demands God perform in a human way or to meet human needs or human desires, like being the most power, powerful God of all or having the most powerful God of all. Ch stop there and say, well, wait a minute, where does that scripture come from? And is that, is that, is that a righteous use of, use of the text? So I'm going to go back and look at Psalm 91 that is quoted here by the devil or the diabolical one. And it says in verse 11, for, the, for God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. Okay, everybody's familiar with that, right? Might be singing it in your head to that lovely tune. Okay. Comes right after verse 9. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. And before that, in verse 2, my refuge and my, you will say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. The priority here is in trusting all that you are to God. That comes first. By priority, I mean it comes first. Turning your welfare over to God. And we are promised God's protection. And we're promised that we'll be born up. The devil's trying to do it out of order. Throw yourself down because God will bear you up. The testing is both so that we can, so that Jesus can encounter our, our life experience, but it's also so that we have a model of what do we do? What do we do when we face temptation? Because we will. We do. All the time. All the time. There are opportunities to be tempted to not let God reign in our lives, not, not live according to God's will, not live by the Spirit's guidance. Go to Scripture. That's what Jesus did. Go to Scripture. Trust that what we need has already been provided us. And search there because that's the thing that's going to help us, not just, not just um, avoid the immediate challenge, but it's going to help us be shaped, be shaped and be transformed as we follow this journey. And we have lent 40 days to do it. And it was great, I think Gregory the Great, Pope Gregory the Great, um, which I think was in about the 8th century. I could be wrong. 
who pointed out 40 days is approximately one-tenth of a year, right? 365 days, close enough. What else do we talk about doing in one-tenth? Tithing, making an offering. So think of Lent as an offering. Think of Lent as tithing. You are disciplined to God, tithing your behavior to God, tithing your um, mercy to God. And one of the reasons we use a devotional is because we use the scripture as Jesus did and reminds us, when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Meaning it ain't over. Right? I, I can just see the devil walking away. This is not over. But what is the opportune time? That's when Jesus is betrayed. Jesus is turned over. Jesus dies at the cross for our sake. But it also reminds us that this is not a one-time deal. And so we got to turn back, turn back, turn back. Let us use this time and this model to be, to be transformed this year in Lent. Please join me as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Sharpen his proclamation of the word so that your people learn to reject voices of deception and distraction. Strengthen all who are tempted to believe lies about themselves or others. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth and all its creatures. Protect wilderness places and all plant and animal species that call them home. Sustain farmers and all laborers who work the land and harvest the fruits of its abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Awaken elected leaders and government officials to the needs of those who are oppressed and grant them compassion to deal mercifully with immigrants and refugees who, who reside among us. Grant safety and safe passage to those fleeing war in Ukraine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those in need. Rescue those experiencing mental Ill illness or contending with addiction. Ease the anxiety of those who live with dementia. Command your angels concerning all who are sick. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this assembly. Bless those who bake bread and prepare the table for our communion celebration. Accompany those who share the bounty of this meal with those who are homebound or hospitalized. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
We pray for those who are called to professionally minister. Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, Alaska Synod Bishop Shelley Wickstrom, Bishop Tessa Moon Lyseth of Our Sister Synod, the Alaska Southeast Cluster, Pastor Karen Perkins, and Sitka Lutheran Church Sitka. Grant wisdom to inform all ministries. Merciful God, for what else do the people of God pray? For the Merrill family as they explore um, options. For the Ukrainian Orthodox and Russian Orthodox churches that they should work together for peace. We give thanks for those who have died. Gather them with all the saints into your heavenly dwelling place and encourage us with the promise that all who can, that all who call upon your name are saved. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the part of our service where we lift up our gifts to God. We offer ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Members, of course, are encouraged to give our regular tithes and offerings through an assigned number, and we have regular vehicles for doing that. You're invited to go to our website and use PayPal or one of the other donate buttons that we have on the website. You can make a special offering to the RLC on KINY ministry, which helps keep this on the air, or to the RLC food pantry, or to Juno Live, which helps with community outreach. You're also more than welcome to come by in person or make a food donation. We encourage people also to be involved with the community and appreciate volunteers. All of these things are gathered together in song and prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the mission of Resurrection Lutheran Church is to promote spiritual growth in Christ and service to all people. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness, and strengthened by, for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This has been an abridged worship service of Resurrection Lutheran Church. You are welcome to join us for worship in person on Sunday mornings at 9.30. We are located at 740 West 10th Street in downtown Juneau. Our phone number is 586-2380. More information about our location, parking lot, current COVID policy, and other contact information is available on our website at rlcjuno.org. The website is also the best way to learn about what events are happening with the community outreach ministry, Juno Live. With a vital food pantry, bell choir, quilting group, Bible study, and others, there may be a ministry here just for you. 
come and see.